Postmark is a fantastic email API with some amazing features such as the ability to easily send like merge field data. So populate data in a field in the template uh, from your bubble app and send it all across uh, with the, like a code example uh, just like this one. But what if you want to send across an image? Uh, now I was speaking with a coaching client and they were really wrestling with, well, how do I attach an image? And yeah, that's complicated you don't need to do that because in this bubble tutorial video i'm going to show you how you can send an image as just the url and then have that appear as a logo in your email template that you're sending from your bubble app through postmark now it's a best way to do this not only because it's simpler to set up but also because uh it's a, actually a pet peeve of mine when people have their logo in their email and it is an attachment rather than pointing at a source of the image on the server. I, I don't know why Postmark does this. I don't know if it's just in Arc. It's buggy. Anyway, um, it just means that, you know, if someone sends you like a two megapixel logo and you exchange 50 emails with them, you probably got at least 100 megabytes of logo sat in your inbox and it's all the same logo. Uh, and it's just a waste of space. Um, so yeah, let's set it up so that we can take something simple in our bubble app like this. We're gonna upload an image and then we're gonna send that image in an email as the logo field in Postmark. So um, oh, before I dive into that, if you are learning bubble, then click the link down below because I've got at least four or five other videos on Postmark, including how you can set up alternative sender domains, meaning that uh, your users can send uh, under their identity through your bubble app. We've got video covering that. We've got videos covering all sorts uh, to do with no cap, no code app development. And you can click the link down in the description to find out more and start watching those today. Uh, so let's just set up uh, this workflow because um, I need to save an image um, for my uh, business like as a logo. So let's just update this to say uh, upload a logo. And then let's add on the workflow and we'll just save this to current user. So we'll say make changes to current user. Add a field logo image. And then link this to the uh, picture uploaders value. Perfect. Uh, so let's give that a try. Let's upload an image. Uh, now I, th I think that worked, so, but it was really quick. Didn't even see a loading bar, so let's just test it. So I'm gonna get an image field. Uh, no, in fact, the best way to do this, because if you're setting up like a settings panel, like a my profile, we would just wanna make this dynamic so that it can easily be overwritten. So we'll say logo. So that just means that when the page loads, it's gonna show the logo that's been saved for the user. So by refreshing it, I can see that we have it saved in Plex. Now I'm gonna demonstrate one other thing here because this is gonna, well, if you don't understand this, then the next few steps aren't gonna work. I'm just gonna add in a text label and I'm gonna say uh, current users logo and then we'll say URL because ultimately this is the source. This is where our logo is saved into our bubble storage, which is basically AWS storage managed by bubble. Uh, and this is the actual location on the internet of the image file. Um, but if we go ahead and we demo it, we'll notice something peculiar, or at least something we need to take note of, uh, which is that here's where the image is stored but there is no HTTPS colon at the start of it. And now we will need to add that in in order to make sure that it works with Postmark. So let's set up our Postmark integration. Uh, and I can do that by going to Postmark. And I've just set up an invoice here uh, as an invoice template. Uh, and you can check out my previous videos on Postmark on how to do that. But you know, this is, I think I've, I've not even changed this. This is a template. Postmark makes setting up an email API so quick. Um, and uh, we can then look at the code example. And this is what I need to send through to Postmark. So I'm gonna copy this and place it into here. I'm then gonna take my server token. And I'm putting in header because you can see here, H for header, D for delta or basically B for body. 
Uh, and then the endpoint is going to be send with template. So I'll put that in here. I'll say uh, send email with template. It's going to be a workflow action and it's post. Uh, why is it post? Well, because we get told here that is post. Uh, and then these are all of the fields that we have to provide some data for in the template. Uh, so I'm going to copy that uh, and uh, paste it into here. Uh, and then basically we have to send from a, a verified sender. Uh, so that, that has to be a sender signature that you set up in your postmark account. So uh, I think I think I've got the plant no code domain set up for that. Let's just try it. Uh, there's the alias that tells you which template is going to be sent. This is all demo data. I basically just want to initialize it and make sure that it is free from errors. Let's try that. Uh, does not contain a valid server token. Uh, ah, I chose the wrong one here. There we go. Private key in header, not in URL. Let's try that again. Brilliant. It's worked. I can go back into postmark, refresh this weird effect that's going on. Uh, then if I go into streams and transactional stream activity, uh, I can see that, yeah, this is the one and it's been sent through. And this is really helpful for debugging because I can go into the template model and I can see all the values that I sent through to it. Right, let's go and actually set up an image. So I'm going to go into my templates and choose my invoice template. And something that's so easy to get tripped up with here is that uh, Postmark for email deliverability, for accessibility, you have both a HTML version and a text version. And everywhere that you've got these double curly brackets, where's an example, here we go, like product name, uh, that's a variable, that's a merge tag that you can insert data into. And when you click on code example, it's going to show you all of those because they're they're sort of like required fields now. Um, but if you remove them, like say you've got this invoice template and you don't need all these fields and you want to simplify it, you also would need to remove those from the text version. Otherwise, it's still going to list them here because it still appears in the sum of the email. Uh, so refresh it. Let's add in an image. And I'm actually going to add the image in to the layout because that's what wraps it. So I'm going to go into my layout basic here and then preview. So where it says product name, which is, is that the one? Product name value. I think that must be it. Yeah. I'm going to insert an image here and we just insert it as an HTML image. So we can say image source and then we'd say uh, logo URL make it just lowercase um, we can even add in like an alt we could say logo and close it off there I'm going to click save and then I'm going to go preview and we can see now it's broken it, there isn't actually an image there because if I go into test variables my image logo has no value what I can do is go back into my bubble app and I'm going to copy the location here. And paste it in with HTTP S. There's my logo. Now it's a little bit big, so let's add some inline CSS into it. Uh, so we can say style um, equals, and um, let's say uh, max width, uh, let's say max width 80 pixels, min uh, max height. 80 pixels. Now I'm no expert with uh, CSS and HTML syntax in emails. Uh, emails are so much less reliable, so much more fiddly than if you're coding a website. There's just such uh, the cross compatibility. You know, AOL email client is going to make an email look different to Gmail. All of that uh, is important to consider 
Um, but now we can see that it's a great size. So I'm going to click save there. And then I'm going to go back into my uh, invoice template. And now my code example, we can see that there is a logo URL uh, field. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to add it in here, making sure I've not broken the JSON syntax, like commas are in the right place, I've not missed any speech marks. Uh, and I'm going to make this into a dynamic value, or like a merge field variable in bubble. So we can say uh, logo. Uh, and then let's also set the uh, name as well. So really, all of these values, uh, you would set them up as dynamic if you need to make them dynamic in your email, but I'm not going to spend time doing all of those. I don't need to reinitialize. I'm confident that it's going to work. Uh, so let's just set this up uh, here. In fact, I'm going to add in a name field too. Let's add in the name field. Uh, initial content, I'll just say Matt. And then uh, I'll put in a button. And we'll say send email. So I can now go into plugins and I can find my postmark send email with template action. Logo, I can say current user logo. But it needs to start with HTTPS like that. And then name, I'm just going to draw upon that input. Right. Let's hope we get this working. Let's test it. So I'm going to click send email. Just click run. Didn't get any errors. That's good. Let's go back into postmark. And have a look at the activity stream. Notice I've got this uh, server set as sandbox. It just means that the emails aren't actually going to anyone. Uh, is that it? Yeah, this is it. There we go, and there's our logo, and there's the name. So, yeah, that's how we can get it to work. Uh, that covers a number of common uh, mistakes slash frustrations that uh, certainly I've encountered with using Postmark, just things I've not understood uh, as I've tried to deploy it into my bubble apps. Um, but there you go, that's how you can easily add a logo, add an image to an email, and send it through a Postmark template from your bubble app.